During his early runs at Bonneville Salt Flats, Stan Barrett reached 638 miles per hour, the fastest anyone had ever driven. For Hal Needham and Stan Barrett, it was a triumph. But there was still another 100 miles per hour to go to reach the sound barrier. Why are you crying? Are you happy? I thought how fast it was to have gone as fast as we had, and I went, boy, this is not going to be an easy task. To prepare for the increase in G-forces he would experience at high speeds, Stan put himself through a rigorous training regime. During the run at the Salt Flats, the wheels had broken through the surface. So for their supersonic attempts, they moved to Edwards Air Force Base. Here they switched to a new rocket engine, which would give them 48,000 pounds of thrust. The power of the car was awesome. But was there enough power to reach supersonic speed? I didn't really like the idea of being coupled with that sidewinder. It was mounted right behind my head for one thing, and I was not real convinced that whatever brackets they had holding it were going to keep it in place, and I was kind of afraid when I fired it I'd lose my mind. The other thing about the sidewinder was when you turn it on, you can't turn it off. So you're really committed. the first test with the missile, the car shot straight to 500 miles per hour in only 10 seconds. The extreme G-forces ruptured a disc in Stan's neck. I don't know, I was so surprised that it hit me so hard. Ready for but, uh, uh, yeah, you're breaking up on that radio. You, know, you get a lot of acceleration, period, then you hit that thing and it like triple. The next challenge was to test the car at maximum power. It was a tense moment for Stan's wife and family. Traveling at 1,000 feet every second, he reached a peak speed of 714 miles per hour. Almost, but not quite, the speed of sound. less than a minute, and Stan was safe. A mile and a half into the run, he fired the Sidewinder. Once I hit it, I was really surprised again at the extra acceleration I got. I pulled another G at 640 miles an hour. And a few seconds later, I felt some pretty sharp buffeting. And uh, then it smoothed out. And then it was like hitting a wall when the engines quit. The deceleration was pretty dramatic. Stan had broken the sound barrier. As he approached Mach 1, his two back wheels left the ground. He'd come dangerously close to death, but he'd gone supersonic. So far, we don't have flander speed. We ran out of fuel between two and four hundred feet before the lights. We got 734 on radar, 739 on airspeed. We probably broke the speed. Of sound. 